Well, hello folks, welcome back to another lesson of Lindsay Sexual's It's Not Rocket Science when it comes to horse and hoof care. Now, today I'm going to talk to you about long toes and underrun heels because quite a few people have been requesting this because you need to understand, because you want to understand what is meant by the underrun heels and the long toes and how they go together. So that's what we're going to look at today. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's get rid of my rocket. Okay, so here we have our foot. And here we have the coronary band, which bends, it bends. And you have these papillae here in the, these little structures in the coronary band, and they produce the horn tubules. Now what happens is that these grow down at a slightly different angle. So the horn tubules are coming down like this and they graduate so that, uh, that at the back they're coming down at a less of an angle than at the front. So at the top, at the, at the toe, oop, I think let's just draw that in again. So at the toe here, they're growing down at a different angle than they are at the heel. Oops, I hope you can see that. So at the heel, they're at a lower angle here and at the toe, they're at a steeper angle. And this is really important because when you're talking about heels, you have to take into consideration the angle of the growth of the horn tubules from the papillae that are at the coronary band. And the reason that they're angled like that is because of the angle of the coronary band on a natural healthy foot. So if you have a situation where you are allowing the heels to get longer, you can imagine that this happens. Let's imagine, oops, let's imagine that you have this situation where you've allowed those heels to be longer than the hard sole plane, which is what mother nature's constant. So if you allow the heels to get longer, they will actually go underneath the foot or underneath where they should be. And that is what we call an underrun heel. Now it's really interesting because, it's really interesting because what people tend to think is an underrun heel is a low heel. They think that when the heels have been taken back to the hard sole plane and you have the heel bulbs on the ground or close to the ground, <laughs> for instance, in a thoroughbred, you will then assume, or many people assume, that that therefore is an underrun heel. Not so. The heel is actually back to where that horse needs it. What an underrun heel is, is when this continues to go longer than the hard sole plane and it ends up growing this way. And that's your underrun heel. Now, if you try and keep this in concert and you keep this balance, then obviously you're going to end up having a longer toe as well. But that's not exactly what normally happens because usually what happens is that this part of the toe starts to be removed because you're either rasping, because the tooth care professional's either rasping from the top or they're rasping from below to try and shorten that toe, or they're doing both. So what we tend to have here is we, we then have a situation where we have an underrun heel, which is going this way, which is not down to the hard sole plane. They've chopped the toe off here, and then you have a situation where the surface area that that horse is standing on is much shorter. Now, it would have been longer back here, but it wouldn't have been correct, but it would have been longer, the surface, or the surface area would have been longer, but it wouldn't have been correct. So surface area is really, really important to a horse. So if you don't have an underrun heel, so you keep your heels back to where they should be, which is my board. <laughs> which is the hard sole plane here, which is what we trim to, which is we haven't made up. We are not personal preference trimmers. We don't go along to a heel and go, mm -hmm. should we leave it just a couple of mil or three mil, a credit card thickness or whatever above the hard sole plane? We don't do that. We go, no, 
hard sole plane is where it's at that's where that horse needs its heels so we bring the heels back to where the hard sole plane is and that means those heels are in the right position we haven't chopped the toe off because we are allowing those horn tubules to be here on the ground so that that enables feedback to the papillae up in the coronary band which means that we can then balance from heel to toe and this gives that horse the maximum surface area that he needs or she needs to walk on and it's really 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 important that they have the maximum amount of surface area but the problems all arise with hoof care when we we look down from above there's our eyeball and we're looking down at this foot and to us we go to the human eye we go oh no oh no that looks long why is it long so the human is looking down from the top and assessing the hoof from the top now this is a major problem because everybody does it everybody looks at a hoof they look down from the top like this looking at the horse's foot and they assess the length of the of the toe you can't do that you have to always be looking from underneath you need to look at that always from underneath and anybody that comes to you anybody whether they are professionals or not and they are looking at your horse's foot from the top you ask them to have a look from underneath. They need to be looking at the foot from underneath because they need to know where all the structures are. They need to know where the hoof wall ends. They need to know where the white line is. They need to know where the sole is because only then can you assess how long a toe actually is. You can't assess it from above. You need to be looking at the structures underneath. But where this starts to get complicated is when you start to get situations where you have separation down here because you've got a poorly foot and P3 is in here trying to carry on being normal but you have this situation where if you look on our page, you'll see images like this. Now, you won't see it on most other pages because people don't leave this toe on the ground. We have the heels back where we should have them, back at the hard sole plane. We have the toe here where it needs to be in terms of its feedback because we have to remember that this is the physics of biology because this is a living organism and it relies entirely on feedback mechanisms. That's how all organisms rely, from their cells, from the chemicals within their cells and the molecules, all the way up to organs and the complete body. Everything relies on feedback me mechanisms so that it can, in order for it to keep balance throughout the body. So we're not just talking about balancing the foot, it's about entire balance throughout the body. And this is a sick foot. We don't want to be riding this horse and show jumping and eventing because this is a sick foot and we need to understand that it's a sick foot and it needs to rehab. And during its process of rehab, if you do it properly and safely, you always protect the tip of P3. But the problem arises when this is all misunderstood. And if you look back on the HM page, you'll see where we've talked about uh, rotation and we've discussed this long toe. So when we're looking at it from above and we see all of this and we see this awful long toe and we're like, oh my goodness, the horse must be tripping. It must trip. No, it doesn't. The horse doesn't trip because of the way that the horse walks. It doesn't trip. Plus its brain is connected to this foot. It knows where its foot is. And then this long toe must be continually tearing this lamina. It must be tearing the lamina. No, it doesn't. It doesn't do that either. Because what happens is it just grows out over time following the correct angle of P3. And over time, gradually, this is removed. And that's a very safe way 
and a, and a comfortable way of rehabbing a horse. So when it comes to long toes, I hope that stays put, please stay put. I have somebody needs to come and fix my board. <laughs> so when it comes to understanding long toes and under run heels, you have to first understand, oop, let's take that black one. You first have to understand about the papillae. These, these little jiggers up here, they are very, very important structures and rarely does anybody ever talk about them. And yet they are really important when it comes to forming the hoof wall because they create the horn tubules and the intertubular horn, which is the glue, which glues it all together. They create that, these guys here, and nobody ever thinks about them particularly when we go and we chop toes off. Because as soon as we do that, these guys are like, huh, what's just happened? Because now I don't have that correct feedback. No matter whether the toe is out there or not, these guys need the feedback. They need to know so that they can balance everything that's going on within that that horse's foot and why is that important it's important when that foot is trying to heal it's really really important because you're going down the healing pathway not the pathological pathway and all other kinds of issues happen when you start chopping off the toe and we've talked about this before not only do you shorten that surface area so now you've got a smaller surface area that that horse is walking on, but it always comes hand in hand with leaving the heels too high. And so you end up having a situation, oop, you end up having a situation where the heels are coming like this and they're too high. This is distorting out here. They're trying to keep this hoof past an axis in line. And what ends up happening is this. And then you go like that, because that's now the bit of the surface area that the horse is walking on. And the, and the end result is that P3 begins to look rotated. And that's the problem that you have with hoof care. First and foremost, understand what is going on in the coronary band. Understand these papillae, because they're so, so important. That will guide you, that and the hard sole plane, as to where the heels should be. Because you understand that these horn tubules grow down at slightly different angles from back to front. And because of that, if you carry on with these horn tubules, and, or if you carry on and allow the heel to be higher than the hard sole plane, you end up having an underrun. I think my pen's running out. You end up having, let's have that red pen. You end up having an underrun heel because the heels are now going off in this direction. The longer and longer that you leave it above the hard sole plane. When it comes to understanding how to trim a horse's foot, you always, always have to look at it from below. It's really, really important that you don't look at it from the top. So let's get rid of that. We do not look from the top. Oh, well, the only thing that that can tell us from the top is it can tell us about the rings that we see going, uh, 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 you know, the event rings that we see coming down the horse's foot. And what happens when we shorten the toe here? And we've also left this, so of course we've shortened this surface area. But what happens when we shorten this toe and we take it from being on the ground where it would have been before, we interrupt that feedback. We interrupt the feedback to the papillae. That then therefore causes a slowdown in the growth rate. Because now you've got this growing at a different rate to this because this is not being stimulated in the same way. So now we don't have balance. Not only do we interrupt feedback and growth rate, we also affect the natural pillars of support. And those, my friends, are really, really important. And we will do another lesson on pillars of support because the horse 
has its own natural pillars of support or natural active wear patterns, active and passive wear patterns in every foot. It has a natural pillar of support and wear pattern. And when we start removing toes, we affect this, we affect this, and we affect this. And yet nobody ever really thinks about that. And this is all the physics of biology. And that is the bit that you really need to think about. Nobody ever does. Nobody thinks about feedback. Nobody thinks about growth rates. Nobody thinks about pillars of support. So consequently, they're in this continual cycle of meddling with the foot to try and make it look right, to try and get this HPA right, to try and make it look right from above because it looks, looks wrong. And that's not how you work. That's not how you should trim a horse's foot. You should always trim a horse's foot by looking at the hard sole plane. That's mother nature's constant. And by trimming to mother nature's constant. Burp. Stay still. Right, I hope that helped. Talking about underrun heels is all to do with the angle of the papillae. And then the long toe, well, that's about observation from the top. People look at the top and, and worry that it's a long toe. And especially when the foot is healing, if you heal it in the right way, it looks really long. But in actual fact, you've allowed that horse to have, the, to have a really good surface area for it to walk on. It isn't tripping. It isn't tearing lamina. It's just healing. The horse's foot is healing. And if you allow it to heal naturally when you rem and you respect feedback, growth rate and the pillars of support, that horse will get more and more comfortable. It will get better and better as long as you have, of course, sorted out. Mm. As long as you have, of course, sorted out the diet, because that is paramount. If you haven't got the diet right, then there'll be no rehabbing any horse's foot. You'll just chase your tail forever and a day and the horse will just go like this all the time. Because no matter whether we come or any other professional comes, unless the diet is right, then these hooves are never going to rehab. But understanding the trim is very important. And if you're living in the UK, we've just released our in-person workshop tour dates for 2024. 2024. Well, the first half of 2024 up until the summer. We're at three of the biggest track liveries in the UK. We're going to Abbott's View track livery. That's with Amy Dell, the lady who wrote uh, the book on track systems. We're also going to Longmarsh track livery that's in down in Somerset with Chloe Holland. And we're also going to Galsworth track livery back to Bethans where we were last year. And we're going back to that fantastic venue again next year in the summer. And we're also at the beginning of the year in Norfolk at one of our students' places where he's got this amazing track system set up too because we love track systems and we like to show all our attendees track, track systems and how they work. So if you want to come to one of our amazing in-person workshops and learn all about this stuff and so much more over three days, then come along to one of our three-day workshops because they are amazing and you will be transformed when you leave those workshops you will know about this and so much more we look inside the foot we do dissections we do anatomy workshops we look at track systems we look at diet we look at management we look at evolution we look at why all of this has happened and we also look at pathology and why the equine world has lost its way over everything to do with hoof care Okay, so if you want to come to one of our workshops, and it's incredibly important for horse owners to understand this, it's really, really important. So if you want to come to one of our workshops, check out the link below, go to the booking form and book yourself in. And they sell out, folks, because they are super, super popular, because we talk about everything there is to know about hooves. So hopefully... We'll see you there. And for those of you who aren't in the UK, don't worry because we are going to be relaunching our, our foundation courses, our online courses very, very soon. They're, they're just almost ready 
and we'll be releasing them very soon. So just hold on if you're not in the UK. You can still learn all of this stuff, but you'll be doing it online, which is just awesome. And the most incredible online course that there is nothing like it anywhere in the world. All right. We'll see you soon for another lesson of Lindsay Setchell's It's Not Rocket Science. See you then.